Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Squirrel, man. Smoke session with Squirrel. Once again, like I said, we start 2024 off with a bang. I got my dog in the building. Let the people know who you is and let them know where you're from. Going down, man. Crash Minotti. That's Crash with a K from Columbus, Ohio, man. 614. Uh, yeah, man. The city. What up, my yeah. dog, though? What up, Squirrel? What's up, though? Shit up, man. Y'all understand, man. It's been a long time. Like, I really been rocking with the guys since like 2015, man, and uh, just seeing the progression that y'all been doing and all the shit you've been doing, man. That shit dope as hell to see the grind for sure. Appreciate it, bro. You no, know, like, um, like I said to you earlier, bro. I, I I see you doing your thing too, man. So salute, bro. Um, Keep pushing, the, uh, bro. Let's get into it, man. Uh, how old were we? How old were you when you got into the rapping? Uh, rapping. I think I really kind of transitioned from like poetry and kind of made that into rapping. Cause like when I was younger, I used to write poems and you know, I used to write poems, I guess you feel me? Like little stories and shit like that. Like, like books, you feel me? Like I used to call them, I had a little notebook with like just stories in them all through them. So, and then I kind of transferred into poetry, like middle school. And then, uh, when I got to high school, um, I don't know. I just randomly ended up in the studio uh, with Elliot Trent, for real. He he was engineering, just randomly in the studio. I think I was like 17 and uh, I recorded my first song. And then um, after that, I uh, met Doobie. He was doing his music thing at uh, Lickin Heights, met him in high school. And for real, ever since then, we just locked in, just kept making music for real. And then just kept going. So you, so you was doing poetry first, like, was that something like, I used to do poetry and shit too. I like that shit. Like, uh, that was just something yeah. you did and then you just transitioned to the music. Yeah. That's kind of how I knew I just had a way with words, you know, like I, that was cause kind of knew, like, I, I know how to manipulate words, move them here, there to make something that sounds, you know, appealing or just cool, you know, or just, you know, and I, you know, I love Lil Wayne, you feel me? Don Tripp is one of my favorite rappers, you know, like, and these are people like, like like big simile metaphor type guys man so it's like uh so so that's that's what i was gonna ask you that so that's some of your musical influences and shit with the music wayne yeah don trip wayne um kevin gates um i remember, Wiz, I remember when don, don trip dropped that damn uh letter to my son remember that shit when that first drop man what man, it was crazy was so, that shit was so crazy to me though I was actually, I was listening to him like a little bit before he started dropping them. Like, uh, like, um, with Step Brothers, I think he dropped a letter to my son before Step Brothers. But Step Brothers is actually, uh, like one of the ways that me and Doobie, um, bonded and connected for real. Cause his favorite artist was, or not fa his favorite, one of his favorite artists at the time was Starlito. Mine was Don Tripp. And before that, we both knew that about each other and then they did the tape with each other you know so it was like oh bro they did this tape together you me? now we you know it, yeah it was hard it was uh it was dope for real but um yeah for a long time i i like don trip man he his lyricism is crazy so he's one he's one of them though but you know it's man I, i'm i got a lot of different influence for real just people that i would tip I my hat to I see you said uh, you're for, you was in the studio with Elliot Trent. A lot of people don't know, man. Uh, and I listened to Elliot because I heard him from y'all one time back in the day. Hey, Elliot, the coldest R and B artist out. People just don't know. Writer, people don't know, singer, bro. Er, that boy's so cold, man. Like I, I can't even say people don't know, bro. Columbus. I mean, they do. They it, know, like, bro. He... But the way, but the way he's writing for Chris Brown and Usher and shit like that, like. People don't see him with his own. That's what they not, don't he's not know. Doing his own song, they don't really know he's colder than that. They don't see him in the studio with Mary J. Blige and, and Kalani, and you feel me? And none of them. You feel me? He he doing his thing, bro. Literally, one of the coldest writers you know I've ever physically got to see in person. Just come up with music, bro. The way he does it is just it's magic for real. Um, the the name Crash. Have I have you always been Crash Manai? Uh. I got the name Crash. I think my sophomore year. Yeah, I think it was either my might have been my freshman year. We uh Fre somebody, freshman somebody year in high school. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a funny story. Um I was actually uh 
in my uh I was actually in my car one day or not even in my car I was in one of my homies cars and uh I had backed into his brother's car you feel me so a nigga just switched the cars around in the garage you feel me so he wouldn't notice you feel me type shit so when bro woke up his big brother woke up in the morning he came outside and seen the car so we all like oh shit man like what's bro gonna say Man, bro came back inside the crib and was like, yo, I was so fucked up last night. I got into a car accident. I don't even remember it. You <laughs> feel me? So, so every oh, time shit. we was around, every time we was around him, you know, they would be like, yo, crash, dude, crash, crash. Just trying to be funny. And it kind of just stuck for real. And that's hard, though. We were just talking the other day. Like, that's, that's dope when somebody give you a name and that shit stick and you just run with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, man, uh, it's, it's cool. So when you you got to doing music, when did uh when did you when did you start with the Minotti Boys? Or where did the Minotti come from? Um, I met Grizzy through um a mutual homeboy JV, one of my homies. Um, uh, I met him through him. That's uh JV's cousin or whatever. And we was making music. That's actually how I met Doobie. To be honest, that was like our mutual connection. I went over to JV's house. And Doobie was there recording with him, and uh, we ended up hopping on the song. Like even before Minotti Boys, it was Guru Gang. Then mm -hmm. it was me, okay. Doobie, Grizzy, JV, Tyrell, um, TJ, uh, Emmanuel the Prophet. A lot of people don't know. Like he was there. You feel me? Like a lot of uh, it. Like we we go back for. Uh, I don't know if you hit the Emmanuel the Prophet. So now nah, I'm gonna get you hit, bro. The Christian rapper, hardest so. out. On their thing, the originator. That's but dope. yeah, bro, it was it was about five, six of us, bro. And uh we was Guru Gang, Gifted Underrated Rappers United. And um me and Grizzy, just once the Guru Gang started, just you know, we started just going our separate ways or whatever. Me and Grizzy, it's like shit, we just about to be Minotti boys, you know, made individuals never applied to I. Kind of like like ain't no I and team type deal. So that's yeah, all like some that's all like some old mafia shit, man. How y'all come up with that? I don't know for real. You feel me? Like, I don't, me, you know, it was a lot of, uh, cause like that's different of, though. Like, of, it's like a lot of people do acronyms and shit like that, but like that's completely different. You've not, besides Illuminati, you ain't heard Minati and like, you don't, you ain't never heard that before. I'm just different. Yeah. And when you actually look up the definition of Minati, I mean, it means prayer. It's a Hindi name, a female name for prayer, you know? So it, it is misconceived a lot, but you know, that ain't, what it what it is or what we stand for at all, you know. So uh y'all started Minotti Boys. Uh what was that big song? What was that first song that got the city fucking with y'all? I have to say Downers. I got powder all over my snow, sir. Tony, Tony like hey, yeah, that bro. Used to go crazy. You feel me? Like that's that's what I think. Uh I think that one that was the one that really got shit cranking for us for real um and it was just that though you know like we was just unapologetically ourselves bro like we was just talking about the drugs talking about whatever it was that we was really doing and just having no shame about it bro and i feel like people just kind of was attracted to that and we were so young we was young niggas doing it too so that's dope man uh but you, i mean passing my coke passing my coke uh the first song we ever dropped together um, what was it? Was it Grizzly in the Cut? Grizzly in the Cut might have been the first one. That was the first video we ever did for sure. But yeah, uh, Grizzly in the Cut. That was the first one. I think that one. That one. That one was really the first one that you know. I think that was the one that uh, highlight her. Like Doobie used to play music for him and shit, and uh, Doobie played Grizzly in the Cut for him. I think he was like, oh yeah, you know, like who is that or whatever. And uh, yeah, he, fu he, he fucked with us after that. That's dope. Uh, so like when y'all was highlight already doing doing this thing down there in the city when y'all was coming up doing music. Yeah, you know, like we highlight. You know, when when as kids we used to look at highlight and be like, oh, this is the man. You feel me? He got the shit going. He got motion in the city for music. You feel me? So it's like this is somebody we need to try to slide with. You feel me? And, um, yeah. or just, you know, like 
we was just like, when you're a kid, you just making music, you already feel like, you know, the shit is going to pop off and shit. But, you know, you know, when you are, when somebody's like within arm's reach of you, and it's like, you know what, this person could probably turn us up. You feel me? He was one of those people. Happen. Like, yeah, he could make something happen. And he ended up linking with Doobie. You feel me? Just, you know, ended up linking with Doobie. And, um, yeah, bro, you feel me? So we was like, when, when we seen, when me and Grizzy seen how Doobie was moving with Highlight, we seen, like, the, his uh, his flyer, the video he dropped, uh, oh, you feel me? It, yeah, the, everything, you feel me? We sitting there like, oh, shit, bro, turning up, you feel me? Because we was doing our thing, but it was, you know, very, you know. Young nigga shit, y'all was just trying to get Young it, nigga yeah, rookie man. shit, you feel me? Like, you know, so we like, whoa, and the whole quality of everything changed. So we like, all right, you know what? We need to go ahead and take that step. You feel me? Like, but at, he was the one that reached out though. So, you know, shout out to Doobie. He, he he was really like, yo, these are my brothers. You need to fuck with them. Da 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 da. Because at first, for real, how I say, he was, he was like, man, I ain't really fuck with him at first. That's what he does. Like, I ain't fuck with y'all. Like, and then eventually he kept playing music and shit. And he like, okay, all right, I can fuck with him. And then you know, we met him. Just Picked up, man. We um, yeah, just became brothers, man. We just made it happen. Yeah, made it happen. It was like every day. Like once we like linked up, we was at the studio every day. It wasn't even on no like, bro, come to the studio. You gotta come to the studio and make music. That's just where we was at. You feel me? All of us just every day. You feel me? Two two five. Not to be able to come out with that good product. That's all you're doing. That's practice. It's like anything else. Practicing, bro. <laughs> Literally. But it was like, we was doing it without not even knowing it. You feel me? Because we was just like having fun. It was just what we did already. You feel me? But now we comfortable in the studio. It's the whole entire city started coming to that <laughs> studio. And it was just like, it was crazy. That was a crazy time in the city, for real. Like the, the music scene really had a, a culture and a vibe, for real. Um, Were you homeless at one time? Um, yeah. Yeah, yep. I mean, when me, Highlight, and Doobie moved out to California, um, we ain't had nowhere to stay for real. It was kind of like, shit, is we going to end up going to Columbus, or are we about to stay here and stay out in Cali? And we was living out the van for a while, you feel me? So, um, I consider that homeless, but shout out to Matt, yeah, shout nah, out to me I yeah, remember, you feel me? So, I remember the grind. I remember the van. So yeah, no, I remember just y'all being out. We, I, I'm gonna happen. keep it all the way real. We didn't have enough gas to make it back to Columbus, so we was like, "Look, we could try." You feel me? We was like, "We could try to make it back," or we already in LA. Make let's something make happen. Shake. Yeah, let's make this shake, and we stayed. You feel me? Thugged it out in the car for a while. You feel me? Ran into Mad Child. Mad Child blessed us with somewhere to stay for a few months, and like. That was cool, man. It was all a blessing, man. I'm just really grateful for, you know, how my life panned out, man. Because I was in college, actually. I came back from college to start fucking with um, SEFMG for real. I'm like, man, I'm about to rap. You know what I, mean? I used to go to Kent State, and I'm like, man, fuck this. You know what I mean? Like, I'm making music. I, and Doobie sent me a song, uh, the one he made with Tate Fresh. I think it was called, like, Styrofoam or uh, a, a, I think it was Addicted. It's called addiction. Oh, addiction. That's what it's called. Addiction. He sent me that, man. And I'm sitting there listening. I was in one of my classes. I remember I had my earphones. I'm sitting there listening. I'm like, fuck this shit. You feel me? I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm going back to Columbus and I'm making music, man. And I'm glad I did. Because I didn't really want to be there. For real. I wanted to be in the studio and came back. That's, that's just dope. being able to do what you want, that you want to do. Shit, like now, yeah, bro. you're doing what you want to do. So obviously, I mean, yeah, yeah, you want that, uh, you want the education and shit. But right now, you're doing what you want to do, making money. You able to support your family, do and, and do it on your schedule. Yeah, don't, don't get, get me no wrong. Business. It ain't it ain't nothing wrong with going to college and getting your education, man. Oh, but no, I feel like sure. one day I might go back. But if you you know follow your dreams, we only you know you only live once. As I hate to say I, it like that, but for real, bro, like go no, after. No, it. that'd be real. That'd be real shit though. Um, yeah. as an artist seeing so many people around you that are 
progressing to the next level. Do you see how close it is in reach? Does it make you want to grind harder? Yeah. Um, as an artist, I feel like when you're living in the moment, you truly never see how close it is or how far away you are. You kind of fit. I think you always kind of feel a little bit further than what you actually are just as an artist. But um, as you, you know, as you grow, you know, you start achieving certain things like going on tour with certain people and just like having people tell you like, yo, if it wasn't for this song, I don't know if I would be here. Things like that kind of validate making music. For me, I could, I could speak for myself. That's what kind of validates like, okay, you know what? This is what you're supposed to be doing, bro. You know? When people hitting like you this, like, man, that song made a difference. Yeah, like if it wasn't for this song, bro, like I wouldn't be here. And like people have actually told me that for real. You know, sometimes, sometimes that's a lot to handle. You know, I'm empathetic. Feel me? So like I, I I feel people, you know, especially, you know, I, I really listen to them when they write me and tell me stuff. And uh I get I, I've gotten that before a few different times, man. And those messages are, you know, they are hard to handle, but they they do they they've let me know, like, you know what, I can't stop. And I'm actually doing this not just for myself, you know. Like I make music make me feel better. Whenever I feel some type of way, just go make a song about it. And the fact that other people can just vibe with it and feel the way that I feel is just a blessing, you know? So that's, you know, that's, I, that kind of validates it. That's, that's what kind of lets you know, like, you know what? It don't even matter how far away, whatever the long-term goal is, you're doing something right now, you know? Like you're here, like you're here right now, you're changing lives, you know? So it's like, yeah, as I do go on, I do feel like I'm getting a little closer to my vision of this when I was younger, but I feel like I'm here now, bro, to tell you the truth. I'm doing so it. Like, yeah. like, you went from being in a group to being a solo artist. Is it harder? Do you feel like it's harder to push and progress yourself as a solo artist than it was as a group? Um, Man, what? When, when you're in a group, it's fun, bro. Man, when you're in a group, yeah. it's just fun, bro. You know, it's like the camaraderie, the family, the brotherhood. I, I love it. Family, like, that's what Minotti stands for. Made individuals never apply to I, you know? So, that is the it was shit. fun. I yeah, appreciate it. But, like, I mean, I, 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 I feel like it's not, it's not, it's not easier. I wouldn't say it's easier. It ain't easier, bro. No, nah, it ain't easier. It's, it's it's the, it's it's the same, bro. It's like, how hard do you personally want to work? You know, and what what are you doing it for? And like, once you figure out your why, it's kind of like, can't nothing really stop you from getting there. You know? Hell yeah! Tell us about Sorry for the Breaks, the first uh, solo project. Shit, man! Sorry for the Breaks. Uh, when I first dropped that, you know, that was the whole name came from me. Just you know not dropping as much music as I knew I should have the previous year. So I'm like, you know what? I'm dropping this tape. Sorry for the breaks. And um, yeah, it was kind of like me. That was my first time really saying, you know what? I'm about to just drop something, you know? Because at the time I was just feeling like I wasn't making music that was good enough. You felt like you were making music that wasn't good enough. What was that song that gave you that validation from Sorry for the Breaks, like as your solo, as being a solo artist? I feel like shit, none of them and all of them, you feel me? Cause it's like, I, I feel like when I make a song, I feel like that shit hard or I'd be like, delete it, you feel me? I, so if I drop a song, I feel like that shit hard, you feel me? So I don't, I always feel like all my songs is hard, but it's like, I was kind of on some, I don't really, it don't matter. Just drop something, you feel me? Like people want some music, give it to them, you know? And I'm glad I did. Cause that was one of the tapes that people was like, man, I'm glad you, drop this because that was your first solo project as a as a solo artist right yeah till till the end i feel like that uh you know that was the song that i made at the big mike had passed you know forever big mike shout out my brother man the goat um when he passed i made uh till the end you know and that really was a song that kind of it was like the first song ever made that I actually, you know, actually was like shed a tear while I was making it. So that song kind of holds a special value 
to me, you feel me? But um, other than that, like, I'm GOAT, period. When I made I'm GOAT, it was kind of like, who, you know, like, who cares? You feel me? Fuck what they say. Fuck what anybody else is talking about, bro. You know you hard. Drop that shit. I'm GOAT, period. That's so, how you gotta feel. I think, you gotta be I think that was kind of my motivation. Like, yeah. Let's I think that was the last song that I made right before I dropped. Sorry for the breaks, too, for real. Yeah, that was the last one. Um, Talking about Big Mike, uh, tell us about your relationship with Big Mike. It's my brother, man. Met him through um, Highlight. And, um, Man, you know, you just meet people who who are just, like, not like nobody else, bro. He was one of them people, bro. Just, like, a genuine, good-hearted person, man. Good soul. Um, but he was like that, you too. You feel me? Like, somebody. Man, Big Mike was him. Big Mike was really him, man. And I, uh, forever Big Mike, bro. But, yeah. Hey, I still he was like a real brother. Big Mike bracelet on. That motherfucker done rubbed off the, that bitch done rubbed off the yeah, wristband. On everything. On everything, so, bro. Like, yeah, man. I, uh, Mike was a real good dude, man. I, I asked everybody in the camp that, so definitely wanted to ask that, man, because everybody got their own special shit with Mike. Like, people don't realize how cool, how funny, how you know what I'm saying. Mike was just that, like I said, Mike was that nigga. Like, a lot of times when y'all would be at shows, yeah, I would hit Mike, Mike or Bond, and they they plug me and get me in or this or that. Or even when y'all would come down to the crib or when we do I'm shows you. down this way, like. Y'all family, y'all already know that. It, like, no matter where you went, if if y'all didn't know anybody there, Mike was gonna know them before y'all left. You feel me? And you, you was gonna be connected in some type of way. You feel me? Like that. That was that was Mike. Like he talked to everybody. Everybody fucked with him, bro. And it was just like, yeah, bro. I'm 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 blessed to have gotten to know him, Big Mike, for real, man, for real. That's what's he up. Definitely bro. left a huge impact on my life. Forever, Big Mike. Um, yeah, forever big black man. Tell us about how you started getting into the movies, man. What uh, what was the first movie you did? Was it Female Hustler? Um, that wasn't the first one. I actually, my first film ever was a film called Junior, and it was out. Uh, I was an extra. I wasn't even an extra. I started off as an extra, and uh, when I got there, one of the people who was one of the main roles didn't make it or it had something else to do or something so they're like hey you come here you know what I mean? and i'm like yo what's up you know what I mean? like all right we're gonna move you up and give you a little bigger role but um it was for uh it was for um like the film institute they had a senior project and the senior project was to create a short film and um uh it was called junior yeah, and uh, it was it, it, it's a dope film. That was the first film I ever was in, and I did a couple commercials, um, a couple like music videos and shit, just like background gigs. Cause like out in LA, that's just like doing DoorDash or something. You feel me? Like you can just go be an extra in a movie or music video or whatever. You know, you, you get said paid being here an extra and there. In a so. movie in LA is like doing DoorDash, there, man. Yeah, you know, on they, they filming like, something every day, every day out there, shit. Every single day, literally, they'll hit you up every day if you're in the right markets and shit like that. But um, yeah, bro, like that's what I was doing to make bread when we first went out there. I'm like, shit, what can I do to just make some quick little dollars? You feel me? Like I'm in LA now. What do I need to do? You feel me? I'm like, shit, I'm about to get in this, you know, extra modeling, acting shit. shit. Hell yeah. yeah, got into acting and modeling for real. And uh, yeah, bro, but um. Dom was my first feature film I could say that I've ever been in. Um, yep, that was the very first feature film I've been in. That was Female Hustler 1. Uh, he was just out in L.A. I can't really remember if he reached out to me or I reached out to him. But we linked up. He like, shit, we shooting on the beach. Pull up. Feel me like, uh, you can come be in the scene. And I'm like, shit, bet. You know, and I pulled up and I hopped in his movie. And then I remember after that, after we shot, we just sitting there chopping it up. I'm like, man, I got this uh, song called Tears for Tasha that I always wanted to turn into a movie. Like, I was just telling him about it, shit like that. He like, look, if you write the script, 
We can make the movie. And I'm like, shit, bet. You feel me? And like uh, nine months later, I had a script. Nine I was going to ask you about script. that. I was going to ask you about that Tears for Tasha, man. Uh, I know you said you had a song, uh, a song for that. What was the what was the influence for that song that made that made you want to write the uh, write the film? I actually wrote the song when I was in college, and at that time, I was really just like uh, trying to tell a story. Like Slick Rick, my dad, one of my dad's favorite artists is Slick Rick, um, and I grew up, you know, listening to a lot of Slick Rick, so. Uh, and he was a great storyteller. You feel me? So st- telling a story in a song was always something that I love to do. It's kind of challenging. You feel me? So I was just really trying to challenge myself. And you know, sometimes like if you're a writer, you know, like when you just get into your zone, you don't really think. It's it's kind of coming out. You know, like your fingertips. Easy, yeah. yeah. And I was just I was just writing it, bro. And I remember getting to the end, like this is kind of hard for real. And I'm sitting like, man, this is. This could be something, you know what I mean? So I always told myself after I wrote that, I actually made the song, but I never dropped it. But um, I just always used to think, like, I just I always feel like if I drop this, people ain't going to be ready for it. They ain't going to receive it the right way, you know, because I just didn't make that type of music. But, uh, yeah, it ran into Dom, and then now it's a film. And uh, I'm, I remade the song, and I'm going uh, I'm to drop it with the, uh, the movie track list. So. Are you, so the film all wrapped up? Yeah, it's all wrapped up. It's all wrapped up. Uh, it's in distribution right now, so it's coming soon. My dog, it's coming man, soon. That's, that's, so, that's so dope, man. I, I'm, and I'm looking at you. You don't put your arm up a couple of times. I remember, man, the cooler eating eating out the cooler in the van. Now niggas got rollies on. That shit fucking crazy. Yeah, bro. I, hey, that's, that work, thing, bro. That, that, that's that's working manifesting your shit though. You know? Yeah, I got a, I got a few different uh, movies on the way, man. A lot of people. A lot of people don't realize how much of a, a movie scene that we actually have here in Columbus, man. And I'm trying to grow that. Like, you know, y'all doing it over there in Michigan, you feel me? Like, y'all got it going. You feel me? Like, oh, like y'all popped it off for real, the whole 2 movement. And we need that culture there, you feel me? So I'm like, you know what? If I could add a little sauce, if I could shake shit up a little bit in this industry i feel like i can make feel like i can make waves for real so um glad i partnered up with dom and imperium you know shout out to dom um but yeah i'm i got my i got my foot in the door now so i'm about to turn it up man we make movies out here in columbus ohio so if you're ready to make some movies man tap in hey that's dope because a lot of motherfuckers ain't on the movie tip like, like that's why over in Michigan, Detroit got that shit. They be doing a bunch of movies, but like, it's dope that y'all got that movie shit going. Like y'all dropping shit that's on TV and that shit being on Tubi, <laughs> and that shit number one. You know what I'm saying? That shit in the top shit. So like, I I commend y'all for that. Um, I see you done music with Kasky, man. Tell us about your relationship with Kasky. Uh, that's my dog, man. He um. Lately, he just been on different type of time on Instagram and shit, and he just been inspiring me for real, for real. Like the way that he moves, like and just seeing where he was. Like I've been following him for years now. Met him out in Cali and shit like that, and um, you know, met him out there in L.A. and like we just fucked with each other. I got a, a song uh, that I'm probably drop pretty soon here featuring Kasky, but um, you know, that ain't supposed to be out yet, you know. But it's coming. You feel me? It's coming though. But um, uh, yeah, man, Caskey's just I, I fuck with I fuck with him. His whole energy, man, and the way he's moving, the way he's handling his business and his everything, bro. I, I, I fuck with it. That's my dog. I be looking at it. I be like, damn, this motherfucker be up five in the morning hitting the workouts and shit. Make your ass want to get on get work. I see you be over there working this shit too, bro. Shit, yeah, bro. Help, yeah, help, help as well if we getting older and shit. Help as well, bro. For real. Oh, shit. I gotta get it together. Shit. Um, <laughs> come on. I got you. Come out to Columbus. I'll get you a little plan together. Yeah, man. We uh we're gonna be coming out to Columbus soon. Uh we definitely gonna link up and get this in person too, have some more fun. Um 
maybe even one of these times we do the, we come down there and get the whole cat get a big part of the cast on we do do something for the movie yeah shit let's do it bro like i, I like the, i mean y- y'all whole city man y'all y'all got people that obviously like every other city you're gonna have haters and shit but y'all mo- majority of this shit y'all a lot of y'all city work together man y'all got a lot of talent out there whether it's the rapping the singing shit the movies the 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 sport djs sports and shit like man y'all got a lot of shit going on out there man columbus man we really do for real like <clears throat> especially like music wise and artists like we really got great great artists and musicians out in columbus ohio for real and i think this is the year man i think this is the year we're gonna get the respect we deserve man i see everybody really starting to flourish and just open up that door to you know how 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 it goes how it works i'm just starting to see it bro and i think it's time man it just took some time but we 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 there bro we we, we there columbus ohio um, one more, one more thing. I know y'all been around for a while, man. Uh, tell us about, tell us about your relationship with Randy and Sally, man. You know them big homies. Randy, you know that's my guy, man. Um, anytime we ever went out to Indianapolis, they've always showed us love from the first time we met through Jelly Roll. Shout out to Jelly Roll. We was on tour with Jelly Roll. Um, I was just on tour, you know, like uh carrying highlights uh dj equipment in and just you know working the merch table and stuff for the first year the second year i got to perform snow day and stuff like that but um yeah that's how i met them you know just being out there on the road just you know just as as, as hands as part of the team just you know extra set of hands you feel me and i met randy and he just always told me like bro i fuck with your music you know i was in Manati boys at the time he's like man fuck with your music bro and it was more than that though you know it was like like they, oh, every time we go, I think the first time we ate, we had, had like chicken, mashed potatoes, some green beans, some corn. I can't remember, but they made us a whole meal the first time we came, you know. And it's you know stuff like that. We sat there and ate it like a family, you know. And that was like the first time we ever met, and they let us sleep in their house, and it, you know it was just cool, bro. So every time, ever since, you know, this has been my brother. So shout out to that's, Randy and Sally. The kids are awesome. That's dope shit, man. Especially when you find people like that on the road that. You link up with and you be like, shit, that's fam. Them motherfuckers always showed the love, always been cool. And uh, so, yeah, man. Um, yeah, bro. You, you said it something about Jelly, man. What do you see? Like you said, you was on the road and doing stuff at merch table shit. And then what did you, what do you see now? Like, what do you think about how big he is, man? Like, seeing how big this boy is. It's crazy. It's amazing, bro. It's like, it's amazing. Like, just, and inspiring, you know, because I, I seen it. I was there, you know. He's always had that star quality about him, you know, just in, in the way that he speaks, the way that he talks to people, interacts with human beings. You feel me? He really listens to his fans and supporters and things like that. Those are things that I've noticed and picked up just being on tour with them for those couple of years. And it's like he's a real human being too, you know. So he deserves it, bro. And I'm I'm, I'm glad to see him doing everything that he's doing, man. It's it's, it's it's fire and motivating more than anything it just motivates me you know like you said yep. on the award he said it's that's something about right. a four-year-old winning you feel me artists, <laughs> new that artists, do, that's new artists arts. of the year it's just the spiritual about it you know and it is man it's just like what more motivation do you need than that you know and the story crazy so like it, it's just yeah um, like I said, I just asked that because you was you was right there, like you said. Remember, like you see, it, it's in reach. You know what I mean? Like it's somewhere you could touch. Like and just seeing the, the climb is just keep crazy. Going. Just keep going, now, hey, man. That, like, that, that's that's how that's how close y'all is with everything y'all doing with the clothing to the to the movies and the music and everything. Just the move the movement you got going over there, man. You right there. You sure, know what I'm saying? Yeah, especially especially since you got a fan base though. Like a lot of people don't have a fan base. So like you got actually got a fan base, team got a fan base. So it's gonna Appreciate work. It, we just gotta keep grinding. Yeah. Just like I'm seeing over with the, with the podcast stuff. Like it's just about work, man. If you don't you don't keep working, that's when shit slow up. As long as you working, shit gonna keep moving. You just gotta keep it moving. Facts, big facts, yeah. bro. But you, know you got the motion, man. I'm seeing it, bro. We on our way. Sir, I appreciate Definitely you. Uh, anything else you want to tell the people before we get up out of here? Shit, man. Uh, 
tape coming soon. Tish for Tasha coming soon. Uh, let's keep going, man. But hey, not- yeah, but I can't even leave, let you leave out like that. Um, I forgot, man. Did you think Snow Day was going to do what it did? Like, that's still, like, like the energy you have <laughs> with that song, like, and I still think it ain't been heard the correct way. Like, if, if a label was to act, like, if it was to actually get pushed by the machine, like, it would be a hit song, a hit record. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know the in way. You know what I'm saying? But, like, that song, is just, it's just crazy. I think I did. I think I did know when I first made it, like, this song right here is, is about to go crazy. You know, like I said, I, I love all my songs after I make them. But, like, the way that, uh, the like, when I performed with it, the way that people just started reacting to it, it just kind of had me going, like, man. Like, maybe, like, people really, like, it, it goes crazy. Like, I'm, like, I remember my first time ever performing it, and I wasn't that good of a performer when I first started. But, uh, my first time ever performing it, I'm just looking out in the crowd, and I don't know, it was probably about 20 some people out there, maybe. And I'm just looking, and they're like, it's going, you know, they're like, lit though. And I was like, okay, they rocking with me. And, you know, the uh, I had a couple other songs that I did, and they just wasn't the same. And that was kind of let me know for that song specifically, like, okay, this is the crowd rocker right here when I can perform. And, you know, that, I just got, it became a better like performer. You said, that's a cloud record. Crowd record. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you had to have been jumping up and down in the studio while you was recording that motherfucker. The the, the tempo and the energy yeah. so hype, there was no way that you were just sitting there sitting like that. I mean, you might have did for vocal, but, but you had to be in that bitch turned up. That's how you, I said you knew it was a hit. Yeah, not yeah, I yeah, I definitely was, especially like you know I turned up with my ad libs and shit like that. So yeah, I was in that lit. I, I was in that lit, but Doobie produced that one. I remember specifically, I was just like. I was working on my voice when I was making the track. If I was trying to keep my voice like a certain to keep that sound, to keep that bounce to it for real. And that's what we was kind of working on when I was making a song. That was just something that, you know, I always remember about it. But, you know, produced by Doobie. So um Yeah, you feel me? Like uh I knew I knew I knew that it was gonna be lit, but it's fine. I love performing it. That's my that's that's one of my favorite songs to perform. I got a couple it, of them. It gotta be. You can go that's, crazy. Yeah, that's that, that, that's, that's the that's that one. Yeah, that's that's the one. You ain't see you see the Snow Day show? I posted some pictures shit, man. We made a snow in there last year, Snow Day Two concert. You made a snow, snow in there, you said? Yeah, then we did it at the very last song, man, brought the snow machines out. It went nuts. It went man. nuts. I had to see some videos. You got videos of this. That's how you. That's how you do next level shit, man. Y'all don't understand, man. He said he had the snow machines and snow going. That's how you have a performance, man. It's crowd. You gotta get the crowd yeah, going. Snow, snow day three. You never know what can happen, man. Pull up. It's gonna be crazy. It might rain right. in there. Man, uh, I definitely appreciate you coming on the podcast for sure, bro. I'm gonna get down there. We're gonna link up soon. Uh, make sure y'all look out for the new project yeah, coming, like we told you. Look out for Tears for Tasha is coming. If you ain't seen it, Female Hustler 1 and 2, both on Tubi, go check out my dog, man. He doing his thing with the music, the acting, the clothing. I love y'all niggas, man. We family. And uh, y'all go subscribe on YouTube. Uh, Crash, let them know where they can find you on all social media. Uh, you can find me at Crash Minati, K-R-A-S-H-M-I-N-A-T-I. Um, that's on all platforms, man. Uh, shout out to Squirrel, man. Shout out to PS Gang. We lit, man. I appreciate you inviting me over to the podcast, bro. Um, love you, man. We locked in. My brother, keep going. Keep doing your thing, man. Let's keep receiving your blessing. Yes, sir, man. Thanks for coming on, man. Talk to you soon. So, my dog. Bro.